Welcome to the Karis Daily Live Bible Study, where we study the Word of God all around the world. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Daniel Amstutz, and I have the privilege of being your host today. I direct the School of Healing here on our Colorado campus, as well as oversee the Karis Worship Ministries and the School of Worship Arts. And it is my privilege to be hosting Greg Moore, who we're going to be hearing from in just a few minutes. But before we do that, I want to again just welcome you you and thank you for taking the time to join us today wherever you are joining us from. This is a live Bible study and so it means that it is interactive to where you can actually send us comments and questions even as the teaching is happening. And then at the end of our teaching time we're going to take a few minutes to address as many of those questions as we can and we absolutely love hearing from you. So thank you for connecting with us like you do. It's such a blessing. And it is also interactive because if this live Bible study has been a blessing to you, whatever day that you're able to see and be a part of it, we want to invite you to sow into this ministry and help us to get this word out around the world. And you can do so by going to awmi.net forward slash give, or you can always call our call center, which is 719-635-1111, and someone can help you make that uh, donation. And let me tell you, it's because of our partners that this ministry is really just excelling. You know, Andrew just recently shared that even during the year of 2020, when COVID was taking so many people and ministries out, we actually increased as a ministry over 50%. It's just incredible what God is doing. And of course, he always does what he does through people. So those of you who are partnering with us, those of you who are sowing, man, we appreciate you so much. Thank you for being a part of what God is doing here in Colorado and literally all around the world. God showed Andrew that we are in the third great awakening and I'm telling you, we just started our school year a few weeks ago, or last week actually, and we started off with such a high level of expectation. I've been with the ministry now for over 10 years, and I've never seen anything like what we're seeing right now. So get your expectation on, because you're going to be hearing from one of our favorite teachers here in just a little bit. And I know it's going to be awesome. He's got a great word to share with us today. But also we are interactive because we have prayer ministers that are standing by who would love to agree with you or pray for you over anything that you might have on your heart. So if you're going through a situation and you just need someone to agree with you, man, don't do this alone. Call our call center. Again, that number is 719-635-1111. And I'm telling you, we are seeing tremendous things happen through our prayer ministers. We're seeing breakthroughs, we're seeing miracles, we're seeing all kinds of recoveries of every kind, and to God be the glory. But we would love, love, love to be able to pray with you with whatever is on your heart. So these prayer ministers are now available 24 hours a day. We didn't always have this like this, but now we do, and Monday through Friday. And then we've also added Saturday and Sunday uh, from 7 a.m. until 6 p.m. So uh, we just want to be available for you to help you in your journey with the Lord in whatever is going on in your heart and in your life. And then I want to just quickly remind you that we've got some powerful resources that are available, uh, over 200,000 hours of free material on our website, and you can go to awmi.net to find that, and all free for you. So this is Andrew's heart. He's, he's always given his material away and really wants to just be a blessing to you and has sowed this. And I'll tell you what, the harvest is coming in. So if you have a particular topic that you are thinking, you know, what does the word of God say about this? Go to that website and you're going to be able to find whatever it is you're looking for. Another great resource, which we've just now recently uh, expanded even more, is gospeltruth.tv. And uh, in fact, what you are joining us on now, whatever platform you are seeing us on right now, uh, we're going to be going live on that platform, whether it's Facebook or whatever it is, for about 15 minutes or so. And then you're going to see a little button at the bottom of the page there that's going to come up and it's going to direct you over to, you just click on that button and it's going to direct you over to gospeltruth.tv. 
TV. So all of our lives are going to be going over to that format and we're excited about the expansion of that. But this is an internet-based television station that is available 24 hours a day. And not only is Andrew on this station, but several of our ministry friends who teach uh, similar to what Andrew would in terms of the content being grace and faith oriented and biblically based. And so, you know, the truth that you know is the truth that sets you free. And that is our heart for you to be free, to be conformed to the image of Christ in every area of your life. So these live Bible studies are coming to you Monday and Friday uh, at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And then also Tuesday and Thursday nights at 6 p.m. And Wednesday morning, bright and early at 7 a.m. And they've been staggered all different times throughout the week to be able to uh, meet your schedule and whatever connects with the way that you are working and the way that you are living. So again, thank you for joining us and, and how often you are able to join us. We're just glad that you're here. So we've got a lot for you. And today, as I said, we have the privilege of having uh, Greg Moore with us. And Greg Moore is now the director, the executive director of Army, which is A-R-M-I, and it stands for Association of Related Ministries International. He comes to us from years of pastoring in Decatur, Texas, and comes with a wealth of experience. He's a published author, and he's also the director of our Alumni Association, as well as our School of Ministry, which is the third year program. So uh, if you'd like to know more about his ministry, you can go to gregmore.com. He's got a lot of his materials on that website. Uh, he's a sought after conference speaker. And so today we are just so blessed to have uh, one of my favorite people here, but also one of our favorite teachers here at Karis Bible College, Greg Moore. So Greg, welcome. Thank Thank you so much for doing another live Bible study with us today. Thanks. And I look forward to hearing what you have on your heart to share with us. Thanks, Daniel. Pre appreciate it. And it's great to be with you guys today. And, and uh, you know, I, I just sense God's pleasure over your lives for, you know, committing this time to the study of the Word of God and, and for God to uh, transform your life so you can be a blessing and transform others. Amen. You know, someone that's watching... You need, you need to give yourself permission to succeed because God's called you to be blessed so you can be a blessing. Amen. He wants you to have enough and extra. If, if your, if your uh, needs are all you're believing God for, you're, you're really unconsciously being selfish. The Lord wants to bless you so that you can be a blessing to others. And someone who's watching today and you just haven't given yourself permission wow. to be successful. That's awesome. You haven't given yourself permission to allow God's uh, inheritance that He has for you mm -hmm. to be fulfilled. So I just, I just release you from the fear uh, and, the, and the unbelief and limitation of that. And I just speak over you uh, that you're going to reach your full potential. Well, we, we're gonna, I'm going to share a good word with you today, but I want to tell you a funny First, oh, um, good. This we is, love those funnies. Well, this is called a, an hilarious pastor's visit. Okay. So, a new pastor was visiting the home of, of his parishioners. And in one house, it seemed obvious that someone was at home. And, but no, no answer came to his repeated knocks at the door. Therefore, he took out a business card and wrote Revelation 3.20 on the back of the card and stuck it on the door. When the offering was received in the next worship service, he found that his card had been returned. And added to it uh, was this cryptic message, Genesis 3.10. Reaching for his Bible to check out what this verse said, he couldn't stop laughing for several minutes. Revelation 3.20 begins, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Genesis 3.10 reads, I heard your voice in the garden. And I was afraid, for I was naked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is uh, funny. That's funny. I don't care who you are. That's funny right there. Come on. That's awesome. Hey, you know, uh, I'm, I am the executive director of ARMY, the Association of Related Ministries International. It's just Andrew's Ministers Fellowship. And we're building a relational community of ministers, both traveling ministers and pastors and people are on staff. And I just want to encourage you, 
We've got a great ministers conference scheduled October 4th through 8th. Yes. Uh, man, uh, of course, Andrew's going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Bob Yandian, Dwayne Sheriff, Carrie Pickett, um, Bob Bob Nichols, Jesse Duplantis, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to even I'm going to be there. So uh, <laughs> it's good. It's going to be great, man. You, I would encourage you to come and check that out. You can go on AWMI dot net and just uh, check our events. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be teaching today from my new book, Walking in Wisdom, and how to access the mind of Christ to make good decisions. How many of you want to make good decisions in your oh, life? Yes. And yes. Uh, you can get this book on my website, gregmore.com, or you can go on karisbiblecollege.org and you can get this book. But I, I cover all, you know, it's been, this has been uh, Daniel, a passion of mine, mm -hmm. you know, really since a child, because mm -hmm. because my um, my parents I, were divorced when I was eight. Yeah, I'm the oldest of five children. I felt lost at sea because mm -hmm. my dad wasn't around. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, my mom, my mom moved us from Iowa to Houston, Texas, and she she was a precious lady, but not a good decision maker. Yeah. And I just felt like, I mean, I don't know. I'm, in fact, when I was 10 years old, I, I was praying, God, would you show me why I'm here? Yeah, wow. And, and how to live. Because mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know how to, I didn't have the right modeling. I didn't have, I, I didn't know how to make good decisions. And, and so this has been a passion of my life is to help people what God has taught me about how to walk in wisdom. Because, That's great. Because, we, okay, in, in Proverbs 4, and and verse five it says, "Get wisdom, get understanding. Yeah. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she'll preserve you. Love her, and she'll keep you." Wisdom is the principal thing. Mm -hmm. It goes on to say it'll it'll give you an ornament of grace. It'll promote you. It'll bring you honor. Um, w wisdom will cause you to bring uh, live a long life and have riches and honor. How many of you guys? Are interested in that? I mean, yeah. the benefits of wisdom Everybody. are amazing. Right. But we are in. We live in a generation that that is information rich mm -hmm. and wisdom poor. It's true. You can you can Google or my grandson. Uh, what is what is the gap? What is, what is the girl uh, that's on Alexa? Mm -hmm. I mean, he. <laughs> mm -hmm. My little six-year-old. Yeah, or Siri. Alexa. Mm -hmm. You know, tell me what. How long Tyrannosaurus is were on the Earth, you know? Yeah, yeah. And and you know we we can Google all this stuff or, or go to Alexa or Siri, mm -hmm. but but it's one thing to have knowledge; it's another thing to know what to do with knowledge. That's right. That's right. Because wisdom, uh, knowledge, uh, is the accumulation of truth and facts. You mm -hmm. gather it all together, and and but understanding is the proper arrangement. Or categorization of truth and facts. In other words, where you you, you know where to file it away, mm -hmm. where you can where you can find it again. Have you ever written a note and then mm -hmm. and then it's like you, you don't know where you don't know where you find it because you didn't file it away right. Yeah. And then, but wisdom is a proper application of truth and facts. And and I've shared this before, but a, a perfect example of that is Galatians six and verse two. In Galatians 6 and verse 5, Galatians 6, 2 says that we're to, um, we're to, uh, what are we to do? <laughs> we're to be <laughs> compassionate toward, toward others and, and bear one another's burdens and mm -hmm. so fulfill the law of Christ. Mm -hmm. In other words, show mercy on yeah. people. Yeah. Um, you know, then, but then verse 5, same verse, three ver uh, same chapter, one, three verses later, it says, every, one, every man's to bear his own load. Right. So, which one which is, is it? Which is it? Yeah, exactly. Which one is it, Dan? Mm -hmm. It's both. It's both. Mm -hmm. But the real issue is, is uh, what, what knowing what to do in what situation. Right. So, wisdom is, is being able to take knowledge that you've received yeah. and rightly apply it in the right place at the right time with the right person. That's good. And if 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 we don't value wisdom, mm -hmm. we're not we're not going to access it, and we're not going to make good decision. Mm -hmm. And you know you can you can end up blasting people like with a fire hose mm -hmm. with knowledge, sure, and and not bless them. You, you know the Bible talks about 
a word spoken in season. Mm -hmm. So have you ever received a word, mm -hmm. but it wasn't in season? <laughs> yes, I have. Uh, have you ever, it says the truth spoken in love. Yeah. Have you ever received the truth? Not spoken not in love. Not spoken in love, where it's, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the old Chinese proverb says, don't uh, kill a fly from your for friend's forehead with a hatchet, <laughs> you know? And so, uh, so the, the, the real issue is this has been a passion of my life. Yeah, that's is so to, great. Is to, I, I really want to, I want to help people. I want to leave people better off than when I found them. Mm -hmm. And it takes wisdom to do that. And if the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing, I really believe not just because I wrote this book, yeah. but I really believe this is the word for this time. Yeah, amen. Because uh, you know, faith was the word for a time, and in grace, and yeah. but I, you know, uh, f uh, wisdom and grace go together. And in in my book, I deal with several principles, and we've talked about, you know, there are two kinds of wisdom, mm -hmm. and you need to know the difference between the wisdom that's of the world and wisdom of God. You've got to realize you have wisdom. You've got wisdom already in you, just like you have uh, you have healing and. And, yeah. and you've got forgiveness of sins, and you've yeah. got, you, you're, you're redeemed, and you're loved, and you've got, you've, uh, Andrew Womack wrote the book, you have, you've already got it. Well, what happens is people approach their request for wisdom mm -hmm. from a place of deficit rather than surplus. Yeah. Because wow. they read James 1 5 and says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Mm -hmm. God will give it liberally, but, and he won't upbraid us. Or, or reproach us, but then it says, "Ask in faith." Mm -hmm. Well, how can you ask in faith if if you don't know that God's grace has provided it? So, what I what I like to say about this principle that I share, and this this is the game changer for me when it comes to wisdom, mm -hmm. is that is that I it's like, okay, do you ever take your wife shopping, Daniel? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have a credit card or a debit card, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you have a debit card and you your wife wants this dress or, mm -hmm. you know, pair of shoes, another pair of shoes, right? Yeah, right. Another pair of shoes. Another one. So, so uh, but you have pair of, you've got multitude pair of shoes, Grace. Yes. For, for Tracy. Yes. And so, uh, but you, and you've got a debit card. And mm -hmm. so, you don't have the money in your pocket. Mm -hmm. You lack it in your pocket, mm -hmm. but you've got it in your account. That's right. And so, you, you use the debit card. Yeah. And to, Make, make that transaction mm -hmm. on what you have on deposit. Mm -hmm. So James is talking about, look, if you lack wisdom here, mm -hmm. use your debit card of faith. You've yeah. got it here. That's so good. And and you've got to realize that you already have it. Yes. And you approach the request from, I may not know what to do right now with my natural mind, Yeah. but God, you've been made unto me wisdom. Yes. I, I have the mind of Christ. Yes. Uh, I have an unction from the Holy One and I'm know all things. And I mean, there's so much that, that there's a game changer for me. Just, just meditating on the word. The more I know God's ways, yeah. uh, the more I'm going to walk in wisdom, uh, walking in the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning mm -hmm. of wisdom, uh, following love, love and wisdom are sisters. If you find out what love will do, mm -hmm. wisdom will be there. That's the, awesome. the uh, story of Solomon mm -hmm. with the two women yeah. that came to him and said that they're, this was my baby. Mm -hmm. And one of them had, her baby had died in the night and she took the, her friend's baby who had an infant also. Mm -hmm. And then the other one woke up and said, this is, this is not my baby. And they brought it before Solomon. Solomon was the wisest king in all the earth. And, he, and, and how did wisdom determine which of the, which of the women were the real mother. Mm -hmm. He knew if he could give them a test of love, wisdom would be there. He would discover wisdom. So he said, bring the child, cut the child in half. Uh, the one that it wasn't her, her child said, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. And, and, the, and the, the woman that was the real mother from a place of love mm -hmm. said, I'm, I'm willing to give up the the right or for of the child for the life of the child, mm -hmm. and so this is when if you'll take the time to set aside anything that is a selfish motive in your heart, and you'll take the time to find out what be best benefits others, 
you're going to discover wisdom. Mm -hmm. And so all of these things are, are just powerful. But uh, I started to share last time about how seeking counsel, seeking godly counsel can draw out, draw out wisdom. Um, Proverbs uh, 19, well, Proverbs 13, verse 10 says, With the well advised is wisdom. Mm. And so here's the, here's the questions, though, that come up. In fact, these are some that you might even ask, or some people may ask it in a question and answer time, Daniel, mm. is, is that, okay, if, if, uh, if God's Word is, is wisdom, and we have the wisdom on the inside of us, why is it necessary to seek counsel when we already have the mind of Christ? Yeah. Isn't the Word enough for me to access the mind of Christ and make good decisions? Mm. What, if, what if the counsel I, I receive is wrong? How do I judge counsel that I receive from others accurately? And how will I know when it's appropriate to act on someone's counsel and when it's not? How can I know who to trust in receiving godly counsel? So each of these questions, uh, you know, will attempt to answer in today's, uh, to, in today's session. But first of all, we've got to realize this. Look, you already know everything you know, okay? But each of us has our own perspective on things. But no matter how true your perspective is, no matter how much it's from the Lord, it's still limited. Mm -hmm. you, you think of, read this verse here, 1 Corinthians 3, I mean 13, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 9. It says, we know in part. Yeah. Yep. We know in part. We sure do. That's one thing that I love about Andrew Womack's ministry is he understands, man, there's nobody I know that knows the Word more than him. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been studying this Word for 46 years, and mm -hmm. man, I mean, my wife calls me her walking concordance, but mm -hmm. man, you get around <laughs> Andrew and I know. you think, you know, well, right. I, you know, what I know is about this <laughs> much. but. But we, we, the bottom line is each of us know, yeah. know in part. And none of us has the whole loaf. And so no matter how much of the Word we know, each of us has a limited perspective. So some have a greater limited perspective than others because um, they've spent less time in the Word. Mm -hmm. Some have more perspective because they've spent more time in the Word. But godly counsel, you need to hear this, godly counsel exposes us to increased perspective. Mm. That's powerful. That's good. Proverbs 19.20, listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter end. Not just listen to it, but receive the instruction and act on it. Mm -hmm. um, Proverbs 24.6, for by wise counsel you will wage your war uh, and wage your own war. And in a multitude of counselors there is safety. So, uh, wisdom comes to us as a result of counsel. Um, and what I've discovered in, in 40 plus years of ministry is that uh, typically I'm, I'm hearing God about what I'm to do. Uh, Ecclesiastes 8, I think verse 6 says, to every purpose mm. there's both time and judgment. The purpose is the what. The time is the when. The judgment is the how or the strategy. And so where we need wisdom typically, what happens is we'll get, we'll understand that, you know, I'm hearing God about, about what I'm to do. I'm pregnant with this ministry purpose or this business or, mm -hmm. or whatever. God's spoken to me about the what. But it takes godly counsel many times to, to develop a strategy to birth that in the fullness of time. And, you know, that's what our third year ministry school is about in, a lot, in all of our schools, really, mm -hmm. is we're in our third year, we're helping people to identify what they're pregnant with, yeah. what, what, what dream and vision God's put in their hearts, yeah. and, then, and then we're helping them develop kingdom strategies to fulfill it and not just be romantic with their dream. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, where I found counsel to be so valuable is I, I pray, I seek God, I hear the Lord, but then I come to my leaders 
and I say, this is what I'm sensing the Lord saying mm -hmm. or leading. Uh, would you guys tell me what you think about it? What, what are your thoughts about it? And I'm almost always better off after, after, after a time of listening to people that I trust in counsel because they're going to help me. Uh, there's safety in counsel. Yes. They're going to help me not make decisions that will cause me to abort mm -hmm. what God has called me to do. Amen. And there are so many, I mean, multitudes. I've pastored for 27 years. I've been in ministry for 40 plus years. And there's just a plethora of spiritual miscarriages and abortions mm -hmm. that didn't need to happen because we walk in pride instead of humility and we're afraid to get counsel because we're afraid uh, to, they might tell us something and we, and we, we, we don't, we don't want to, we want to do what God's called us to do. Yeah, but I'm telling you, you're going to do it better and you'll do it gooder mm -hmm. <laughs> if you'll, if you'll listen to godly counsel. And Jack Hayford was a mentor of mine. Um, Pastor Jack had a, uh, what he called the School of Pastoral Nurture. Mm. And I went to four of those and where you would have 35 to 40 pastors uh, in meet and, and you, you spent time with him for, for a week. And then, and in fact, he invited us in his home. And, uh, but he shared an example. Uh, I shared it in the last session, but he shared an example. I'm not going to go into the, all the detail of God spoke to him about a new campus that, he, that, that church on the way needed. And, and God spoke to him, this is your camp. This is it. This is the building. This is the second campus. Mm -hmm. He went back to his leaders and they said, you know what? We've, we've investigated this. We've looked at it. It's going to be too costly mm. for us to do this. We just don't feel like it's the Lord. He didn't use the God card. He waited and they found out they ended up contracting with another church, that other campus, mm -hmm. and they ended up finding out it needed all this asbestos removal. Wow. And so the, the church that owned it removed all the asbestos, then they offered it at a lower price, and then they, then they bought it. But I learned uh, Pastor Jack's church, they finally bought that campus, and they, I think they still possess that to this day. But I learned a, a major lesson from his leadership at that time. He said, I rarely go in with my leaders and use the God card and say, God, to this is what God told me to do. Because then you can tie their hands mm -hmm. in, in receiving counsel back from them about not only the what, but, but the way to do it and the, and the best timing to do it. And man, I, I just, I, I learned a, a lot there. And so I, I'm, I'm encouraging you, you know, we need to seek, we need to seek godly counsel mm -hmm. about things, the purposes that God's put in our heart. Mm -hmm. Because the majority of the time that God speaks to us, you know, we don't always have the strategy. We don't always have the, the best way. We don't always have the best time. Mm -hmm. And God, and we have limited perspective. And if you will, if you will uh, call on other people to, to get, uh, look, would you, sh would you speak into my life and, and share with me, what do you think about what, I, what God's put in my heart? You, I, I promise you, you're, you're going to draw out a greater measure of wisdom. It's, it's the word, this is the word of God that I read you. Mm -hmm. That with the well advised is, wi is wisdom. And so I, I just, look, look I, I do want to make something very clear though. Okay, you and I are not obligated to act on all the counsel that we receive. That's good. I, just because we go for counsel doesn't mean I'm to follow everything, mm -hmm. but um, but but uh, but you, we need to under, because it, look, if I'm going to hear God, but then I'm going to get counsel, mm -hmm. but then by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. Yeah, uh, you've got to test all. That's Second Corinthians thirteen one. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.21, test all things and hold fast to what is good. I refuse yeah. to act on any individual's counsel or prophetic word to me. That prophetic word can be a pathetic word. That's right. <laughs> if, 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 if you don't pray over it yeah. and you don't get counsel. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I do that a lot. I had a, 
uh, a guy one time, Daniel, was a very powerful minister, mm -hmm. love him, had always ministered great to But I went and talked to him about uh, the health of my church, and I said, what do you observe? Mm -hmm. Tell me what you see. Yeah. And, and he, he gave me he gave me this counsel that wasn't, I didn't witness to it. He said, there's not a clear sound of unity in your church. Mm. There's a lack of clarity of vision and not one sound that people can rally around. Mm. And it just didn't witness with me. Yeah. Now he had powerful ministry, yeah. ministered to our people. Yeah, it didn't, I, this didn't negate his ministry, sure. but his counsel, it, it, in fact, he, he said it almost before I finished asking Wow. The question, like he was primed and ready to go. Yeah. And but we had a clear vision mm -hmm. in our church. Our our elder, we'd never been in more unity, mm -hmm. and we were all about helping people to fulfill their dreams and and um, and grow in Christ likeness and change their world. And I I got with my leaders and I, I said, this guy said this. What do you, what do you guys think? And they said, that's not God. Yeah. See, that's not God. Wow. We're not obligated, mm -hmm. guys. Just because I'm encouraging you to access counsel, uh, it's more out of protection yeah. and it's more out of helping you to develop a kingdom strategy to birth what God's put in your heart so that you don't have a spiritual abortion mm -hmm. or, mis or miscarriage. So what are some of the traits that you and I can, uh, uh, for someone that you and I can go to for counsel? Good. Uh, first of all, you need to go to somebody that knows God, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, do they know the Word? You know, it's risky receiving counsel from someone that gives you their opinions. Yeah. Opinions are like noses. Everybody's got one and they're usually full of holes. But <laughs> if they don't know the Word, and then are they available? Yeah. Will they make time for you? Mm. Are they authentic? Will they, will they tell you their mistakes? Uh, are you know, or and as well as their and failures as well as their successes? Are they mature? Mm -hmm. Do they have character and integrity in their life? Do they encourage you? Um, do they have a strength that you don't have? Mm -hmm. Have they experienced things in their, in their lives in ministry or business that, that you haven't? Well, you, you may want to go to them. Do they have a hearing ear? You know, all of these things, are they compassionate? Mm -hmm. You know, are they, are, will they keep things in confidence? These are all things that I look for. You know, Pastor Bob Nichols in uh, Fort Worth, Texas mm -hmm. is, was, has always been one of those uh, voices to me that I could go to for trust, uh, trusted counsel time and time again. And he, sometimes I would go to him and I'd say, you know, Pastor, here's what I'm dealing with. He said, well, we have questions and God has answers. Wow. And I just listen, you know, and I'd and I'd wait and I and and then he then he come with with something that was really powerful. He said, "You know, Greg, I've learned that a uh, uh, wise is the man that understands the combinations at work." Mm. And with ministries. Mm -hmm. And he said some combinations just aren't mm -hmm. they just don't fit. Don't, yeah. And don't you can't push it. And so many things I've learned from Pastor Bob and you know, but the the bottom line is this, and, and I'll and I'll stop, and we'll have time to answer questions. But um, many times, king major kingdom relationships and connections are established through times of counsel. That's right. That's what happened with me with Bob Nichols. Mm -hmm. I was going through a nine million dollar frivolous lawsuit mm -hmm. that was based on counsel. It got dropped later. In, a, in, an inv, in an involuntary church plant. Mm -hmm. My worship leader took a third of my congregation yep. and went down the street and started another church. And I was complaining to the Lord about it one time. And he said, I, I said, my worship leader took a third of my congregation. And he said, he said, well, you're in good company, son. My worship leader took a third of Did my the congregation. the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, but I went to him for counsel. And, and this is, this is Bob Nichols' card. He handed it to me. It's worn. It's, you know. Wow. You it's, still have it to this day. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, you know what? He gave he gave me excellent counsel. Mm -hmm. But he also said, Greg, if you go, and you do what I'm t telling you to do, and and it doesn't work out, he said, you you, you call on me and 
Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we've developed, I mean, I found one of my spiritual fathers yeah. through that time because yeah. I was willing to go for counsel. Yeah. Uh, Proverbs 11.2 says, when pride comes, then comes shame, but with the humble is wisdom. And yeah. so, wow. guys, look, we need to humble ourselves. That's right. We need to realize we don't know everything. Yep. And we need to realize that, that a part of the wisdom of God available to you and me is in, is in divine connections and relationships. Mm. As we go for counsel, you don't know everything. You don't have a revelation on everything. But if you'll access the wisdom in others, uh, you'll be better off and you'll fulfill God's kingdom purpose for you. So good. Yeah. So good, Greg. Well, that's powerful. Remind them again, how can they get a hold of your book? Yeah, you can just go to gregmoore.com, uh, M-O-H-R.com, or you can go to Karis Bible College. Uh, dot org and and you can you can get the book and, and man I, I just this is really my life's yeah message it really uh, is and because uh, God wants us to walk in wisdom and he's and and he's not he's not holding out on us amen but but, but too many times like just for the, this principle right here mm -hmm. people say well I know the word of God you know and I'm just going to trust God and mm -hmm. I'm but yeah we're limited though mm -hmm. we don't I, I mean how many times have you and I Mm -hmm. Daniel, been praying about something, and I'll just come to you, and mm -hmm. man, well, and and we, and you've got wisdom for me, or mm -hmm. I've got wisdom for you. Absolutely, or, so and, many times. Man, it's just, it, yeah. and there's just those kingdom connections. Yeah, that's right. It draws out. Oh, okay, wait a minute. I see a better way to do this. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We have our own perspective, but then someone else has a different perspective, right. and putting those two together, right. you see a much bigger picture. And you can do it better. Yes. You know, and then because it just, you know, you're thinking about many times we're just limited in, yeah. in the way we see something. And and how many times you've helped me to see yeah. the heart behind a person when I wanted to go in there and, yeah. you know. Give and, them a little five-fold yeah, ministry. Yeah, right. <laughs> or, or just make a decision that was too quick. Yeah. You know, and but then you, you would help me to see well, wait a minute, think about what they're going through, Greg. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Think about what they're dealing with. Sure. What's going on behind the scenes. Well, that counsel helped me then mm -hmm. to soften my approach in dealing mm -hmm. with that person. And it ended up saving the relationship and really helping them. And we could have lost them as a student or staff member. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, amen. Yeah. Yeah, well, so many questions. Uh, thank you for sending in the questions that you have. And I'm telling you, this man has been such an incredible blessing to me uh, in the years that we've been here together. So many times of counsel have helped me through this. So I want to really encourage you to get a hold of that book. I know it's going to be a tremendous blessing to you. Greg, let's, let's jump into some of these questions here. Uh, Rachel on chat says, is there a difference between, quote, advice and wisdom? Well, Rachel, I don't think so. I think that's just semantics. I, I, I just, I mean, if advice or counsel uh, is, is to me is the same thing. The issue is, is it, is it their opinion or it, are they giving you the Word of God? There you go. Okay, that's, that's the, the difference, right? That's the issue to me. I don't care yeah. what you call it, okay? But again, you, there are two kinds of wisdom. And so you could call it wisdom, but a lot, there's a lot of wisdom uh, that's wisdom of the world, like yeah. like God helps those who help themselves. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the wisdom of the world. That's right. When the Bible says that we're to bear one another's burdens, yes, and so fulfill the yes. law of Christ. Yeah. So you want to know from you want to know from the Word of God mm -hmm. that somebody's giving you counsel from the Word, or at least it lines up it's with godly it. wisdom. Yeah, it lines up with the Word. Yeah. Amen. I don't care if you call it advice or counsel. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as yeah. it's from the Word. That's good. Sorks on chat says, what do you do if you don't have someone to counsel you? No minister, no family member. Uh, you are the only believer. Well, Sorks, listen, you got to go to church. <laughs> <laughs> you right? Gotta, you got to find. That's so good. You got to go to the body of Christ, yes. man. You got you to find your company. That's right. Okay. And if you haven't found it, you know, call uh, our prayer line because we can we can give you, we can, help connect uh, you. We can connect you with a Karis Bible study. That's right. Or we can connect you with a, a church, an army church, mm -hmm. uh, or a church that, that, that uh, is connected with Andrew's ministry that preaches and teaches the Word of God. Yeah. You, need, you need to step out. You can't just learn on television or on internet. You've got to go 
and connect with the body of Christ. And, and if you'll ask the Lord, He'll show you, He'll connect you with someone uh, that lines up with some of the things that I've shared. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Great counsel. Nigel on chat says, what are your thoughts on where it says in the Word that Jesus is wisdom? Well, He is wisdom, but Jesus and His Word are one. Yeah. And so, you know, you're going to get wisdom. You can't know Jesus apart from the Word. There you go. Okay. So, uh, there are people that say, well, I don't worship a book. I've seen this, I call it the fake grace news, you know. Right, yes. I don't worship a book, you know, I worship Jesus, the living Word. Yeah. Well, my good friend Barry Bennett says, I'll quote him, you wouldn't even know how to spell Jesus if you didn't have the written <laughs> Word. And so, you know, Jesus and His Word are one. They're so, one. So, uh, He is the yeah. wisdom, but, uh, but you, you're going to get wisdom from His Word. You can't separate Jesus from His Word or separate His, separate His Word. Uh, separate the Word from Jesus. Yeah, really the only way we can know Jesus is yeah, through the Word of God. Absolutely. Yeah. And by, by the Spirit, mm -hmm. but in the, in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anne on chat asks, how do you measure or identify the authenticity of a, of a mentor? You kind of spoke to that obviously, yeah, well, but well, maybe you could share a bit more. It, it just comes by, it just comes by experience and yeah. with them. You know, you, you don't I, as I told my children when they were growing and they were and they were courting mm -hmm. their their prospective uh, spouses, I said, "You don't in developing relationships don't share every intimate detail of your life mm -hmm. with this person. Give them, you know, sprinkle them with yeah. with information. Don't tell them everything about yourself. So you have to get to know a person mm -hmm. and find out will they keep it in confidence. Mm -hmm. um, is there trust? Yeah, and, and you have to develop trust mm -hmm. in that relationship. Sure. And so, uh, you know, that's the way, you know, or you see that they've they've modeled that with others. Mm -hmm. And so, the bottom line is uh, God's got people for you that can mentor you, counsel, uh, have, give good counsel in your life. If, you, if you'll trust the Lord, mm -hmm. He'll lead you to someone uh, that, that can help you. That's really yeah. good. Samaya on chat, Greg asks, when should we tap into the known facts and when should we tap into the godly wisdom that we possess? I'm not sure, of, uh, Samaya, of what you mean by when you tap into the known facts and the godly wisdom. To me, again, it's kind of semantics. It's like I, I, a, a known fact from the Word is the truth. And I'm going to I'm going to act on what I know, that is truth, that uh, is a that witnesses with me. If somebody gives me counsel from the Word, it witnesses in my heart. It all it also I can find it in the Word. Mm -hmm. uh, then I then I've ha then I know that I can act on, and I have peace. Mm -hmm. I have peace. I'm, I follow it out by if I do I have peace. Yeah. And and look, God doesn't want us. To have codependent relationships, so I, I get that too many people want to depend on someone else to be their Bible mm -hmm. answer man or woman. That's not what I'm saying. Here. Yeah. Okay. But but we still we each have blind spots and we need other people. And I've got a circle of men in my life that I'll go to. Daniel is one of those. Mm -hmm. And I will reach out to you know when somebody bites my head off in an email mm -hmm. and I'm about to send. Mm -hmm. An email back in all caps. In all caps. <laughs> yeah, yelling at him. Right. <laughs> right. I'll, I'll let Daniel read it. We've done this to each other before. Yes, we and, have. Uh, yeah. And I, I said, well, I probably worded, worded, worded a little bit different. Daniel yeah. would come back and tell me, or yeah. I would tell him. So, but we're not dependent, codependent on one another. We're mm -hmm. dependent on the Lord. It's really but, good. But we listen, and then it's got to line up with the Word, and then I, I, I measure it by peace. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. One of the things too I love about Greg is he'll often say, you know, regarding the facts, we're, believing God isn't denying the facts. It's just denying its space in your brain over the truth yeah. because the truth is God's Word. Yeah. And so again, like when people are believing God for healing or something, right. sometimes they think they have to deny the reality no. in order to embrace the truth. Yeah. But that's not true. No, it's exalting the truth above the facts. Yeah. I don't, faith is not denying, you know, the, the situation, but faith is 
saying, you know, I, yeah, this is true. Yeah. But, you know, this is truer. <laughs> yeah. This is a fact, but this is the truth. Yeah. If you'll exalt the truth above the facts, mm -hmm. the truth will end up trumping the facts. Yeah. And, and that's true when it comes to wisdom. If I don't know what to do here. Yes. Okay, instead of just saying, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, oh, I don't know what to do, what am I going to do? Yeah. No, just say, well, in the natural, I don't know what to do, but I have, but I have the mind of Christ. Yeah. Um, I have God's wisdom on the inside of me, and I have access to godly counsel, mm -hmm. and I'm going to make a good decision. Yeah, that's yeah. so good. And again, you can see how important it is for us to be studying the Word of God, because this is where we find out what we already have been given. And so, we, without the Word of God, we don't even know what's in our new nature that's been given to us when we were born again. So, aren't you so grateful for the Word of God and just for this time together with Greg? Greg, thank you so much. What a great teaching. Oh, thank you. Greg. And uh, excited about the new book. Praise God. Praise God. And excited that you were joining us today. Thank you again for making time in your weekly schedule to be part of our live today. Uh, I'm, I'm, this is going to be a long weekend because it's Labor Day weekend. So, I want you just to have a great weekend, but we look forward to being back with you again. And again, next week, look at our website if, you're, if you don't remember those times. We're going to be here each day out of the week, including Labor Day. And so, again, it's such a uh, blessing for you to join us wherever you have joined us from all around the world. We want to say thank you to you, and we look forward to our next time together. In the meantime, stay blessed, okay? God bless you. I want to let you know that we're moving all of our live stream productions of Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College to our gospeltruth.tv format. We have a lot of teaching there, not only of myself, but many other people. But now we're moving all of the live streams there. So if you ever want to watch any live stream that we are producing, the place to go is gospeltruth.tv for all of our live streaming as well as our regular programming. You will be blessed.